back for some unfinished business, or so he and his teammates say. Great to have on the Bill Riley Show today, Julian Blackman, now safety at the University of Utah. Julian, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Doing fantastic. How's the summer been? It's been good. Um, just got back into things after the 4th of July weekend, so we're excited about that. So uh, what, what's, what, what do you do? We know working out, you guys are all doing the workouts, but what, what do you do to kill time in the summer? What are you doing when you're not up at the facility, watching a little tape, working out with the fellas? What do you do to kill some time? Um, so we're also in summer school as well. Um, everybody on the team is also in summer school, so uh, that, that takes care of a little bit of time. But uh, I'd probably say the rest of my time probably just goes to um, – just doing homework or watching film, honestly. Um, just been getting prepared for this year, and, you know, I'm just excited to get it going. So just been watching a lot of film lately, honestly. You're all business right now. Is that what you're saying? Hey, yes, sir. The, 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 bus- the business has begun. So you're watching film. Are you watching specifics? Are you just going back and watching games? Are you doing cut-ups of you? Is it defense? Is it opponents? What are you watching in the summertime? Oh, I'm watching BYU film right now um, <laughs> so um i'll go through you know pretty much all of their throwing concepts uh just just going through the things that they they run a lot the tendencies that they that they like to run on um, you know certain downs uh controlled downs and third downs um just pretty much everything just breaking down everything and um trying to consume everything and uh you know me and me and coach galley and have been talking about this for for a little bit so we're just excited about it and uh you know yeah so you you should have a pretty good read on that guy that's throwing the football on the other side. You certainly had a good read last November. I mean, have there been any family gatherings? Has there been anything where you've you've been kind of taking mental notes, sizing him up a little bit more than usual? <laughs> nah, nothing like that. Um, you know, I only wish the best for him. Um, you know, as as he does for me. So, you know, I'm just I'm just excited to play again um, because you know, yeah, they just been like like everyone says, you know. They, they've just been talking a lot, so I'm just excited, you know, to get out there and play. So you you guys have definitely taken note of that, right? They had their media day last month. It seemed like it was more about you guys than anything else. You guys as a unit, I know you have, but have, have you and your teammates taken notice of the talking? Oh, yeah, we definitely we definitely took note. Um, you know, that's, that's one thing that's, that's funny is, you know, we had we had that, um, that, that uh, little talk that they had playing in our weight room while we were working out for a couple of days um of what they were saying um yeah. but uh you know we're, we're not we're, we're not really a talkative team you know we just we just know we we're going to take it game by game um you know whether we're playing BYU or not we, we just know that we got to take it one game at a time because we have a different you know um end result than they probably do <laughs> when you look back on last year's game What's your takeaway from that game? Mine was that I was surprised that they were up by as much as they were on you. And I'm curious, because I've talked to a lot of guys, your teammates, about this, but they they controlled really two and a half quarters of that game. Your interception turned it a little bit, but I I always tell people, they went back down and scored after your pick Mm -hmm. six, Julian. So they're they're up 27-7 on you guys heading to the fourth quarter. When you go back and watch that tape, what stands out, and why do you think that you guys struggled for two and a half quarters in that game? Uh, just, just, just some missed assignments. Um, you know, some guys being out of place on certain plays, and it, and it caused you know big plays for them. Um, but what was going on in the locker room, honestly, at halftime, is everyone was calm, man. Like no, no one was acting crazy. Um, no one was thinking, oh wow, we're, we're going to lose BYU. You no, know, everybody just was ready like all right we're gonna we're gonna come back like don't worry it's, it's gonna come just uh, we're just gonna start having to make plays and uh you know we start we started making plays and then that's that's when we got rolling you did julian blackman's with us here on the bill riley show um you guys played him at the end of the year last year you had the pac-12 championship game the next week that's generally where the game was played for many 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 years when they right. were in the same conference you guys aren't in the same conference anymore do you like the idea of playing that game first getting it out of the way and having the off season to get ready for it Honestly, um, yeah, I, I would say that I like the game first just because, you know, the anticipation and the want to just jump back into football, um, it just makes it more exciting, um, especially for our guys. You know, everyone knows that the BYU-Utah game is, is a really big rivalry. So uh, just knowing that it's our first game, like everyone's just always excited in the weight room. Everyone's always, you know, ready to come and learn 
whatever whatever that may be. But um, yeah, we're we're all just kind of excited that we get to play these guys first, and it'll, it'll be fun. Fifty-one days from today is when it goes. Practice begins in twenty-one. Near three weeks from today, you guys get out and report for practice and stuff like that. I want to talk about the season in a minute. I want to take a step back because I don't think you and I have ever kind of gone back in time. You come from a really good athletic family. Your brother's a, a heck of a ball player. He's a basketball player. Is he done at Santa Barbara? Is he going to play pro now, or has he still got a year left? Um, no. So he decided not to go um, to the Combine. Okay. Um, he, this, this was his last year. So, um, yes, sir, he, he's done. So he, But heck of a basketball player, heck of a hooper. You're a good yeah, athlete, sir. too. But you weren't one of these four or five-star guys coming out of Layton. I mean, you were a good athlete. But but right. Utah saw something in you, and, and I always talk about this because it's one of the th- reasons that Utah was always really good in the Mountain West, and they've remained good recruiting-wise. More mm-hmm. Kyle Whittingham and Morgan Scally and Sharif Shaw and guys like that are able to find guys that will fit within their system. When they're recruiting you, what was their pitch to you, Julian, and, and why did you think that you'd be a good fit at Utah? Um, honestly, so – I kind of started the recruiting um, process late. Um, I didn't really understand it like that. I just knew that I wanted to go to college. So, you know, I went to one of the one of the um, camps that they had, and it was my junior year, and that was when Coach Shaw had um, noticed. And he, he kind of was familiar with me already just because of family friends. Um, him and my dad knew each other before I was even born. Um, so he was he was familiar with me, and uh, he was like, hold on, this, this kid's, like, special, like, this this is this is more than like you know a game. This is family. Like I know I know this kid can play. Like I know he can do it. Um, and then Coach Scally came over and just started like really watching me play. And then they then they came to one of my basketball games, and that's when they kind of sold them. Um, my senior year, they came to my playoff ba- one of my playoff basketball games against Bingham, and um, that was when Coach Scally was just kind of like, "Hey, like we have this offer for you. Um, you know, we we really think that you can do it. Like, what do you think?" And I, right there, I was like, "Oh yeah, this." this is the only one I've got that, you know, that D1. So, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. If, you're, if your other ones are D2 or D3 or 1AA or, yeah. or JC, when Utah comes offering now, you know, th- there's a pretty good history of playing defensive back at the University of Utah. Obviously, you right. probably knew a little bit about that. But what was the biggest adjustment for you when you came into the program? Again, not a really highly touted guy, but a, but a, but a good athlete. When you stepped in, you were pretty quick at getting involved in things, Julian. Right. Um, honestly, I so in fall camp, I was actually very, very confused um, my, my freshman year because I when I came from high school, I didn't know anything about cover three, cover two. I, the only thing that was familiar to me was guarding the guy that was in front of me, which was <laughs> the man, um, which is man. Um, so I had to I had to learn really quick, um, which is funny because I was one of the slower learners um, in, in, in fall camp. Um, but I started really learning it when. I just started to relax, and and that's that's when everything started to just kind of click for me. Like this is football. Like I've been doing this my whole life. Uh, it ain't nothing different. You 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 got it. And then once I started, once I started to really like paying attention to everything, it, it started to click really easily. And I think that's why it helped me with safety as well. You're you're pretty. I mean, I, I was gonna say, I think you've got pretty good ball skills and instincts though too. Did that help? I mean, you say you don't didn't understand the terminology. But right. in watching that, you that's play, that's a funny thing. Go ahead. Yeah, that's a funny thing. Um, you know, I did. I didn't really understand the terminology, but I was still making plays. That's what I mean. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was in fall camp. Yeah, all fall camp, I was still making plays, but um, I just like was just making plays rather than knowing why I was making the plays. So that was the difference. Um, but yeah, I'm always curious because it it happens every year. Offense to defense, defense to position. Who made the pitch of moving you from corner where you were a second team all pack twelve corner twice to safety? Was that your idea? Was that Coach Shaw's? Was it Coach Scally's? Coach Witt? It, it was my idea. Really? Um, so before the bowl game before the bowl game I sat down with Coach Shaw and I talked to him and I said, Hey, um Marquise and uh Corian are leaving next year and I I think that since I'm staying, like this was my decision too, and I was like, since I'm staying, I want to play safety. Um, since they're leaving, I, I feel like that that is like the position that I I I can be really good at, and they they just agreed with it, like right there, and then I started playing safety right there. <laughs> was your was your <laughs> was your initial move to corner from high school tougher, or has been the move from corner to safety been tougher for you? I'm gonna guess it's the first, right? 
Yeah, definitely the first. From high school to corner was definitely more difficult than corner to safety. Because you look nat – again, it was only spring football, and I always tell people let's not lose our minds over spring football because it's not real football. Yeah, right. But But you were making – it seemed like every day we're out of practice, you're making a play in spring football. So you looked – really comfortable what's what's the biggest change for you is it is it kind of getting everybody lined up in the right spot not just worrying about you but worrying about everybody else because that's kind of what your guy does exactly um I think that was the biggest thing is I I, I'm a vocal guy already um and I wanted to be more vocal anyway so um you know that that was that was like one of the more fun things for me to do is you know call out different plays when when I knew that there was a certain play coming um but I think the most difficult thing for me going from corner to safety was just understanding all the terminology inside um, with the, with the interior linemen and just understanding gap coverages because you have to learn strong safety as well as free safety here. So um, yeah, I, I had to learn strong safety and strong safety was the, was the harder part. Free safety came really easy just because it's playmaking. Um, so yeah, you and, that was probably the hardest. You and you and T birds, you have a good rapport back there. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We had, we had an interview today, um, you know, just talked about a couple of things with why, I, you know, me and him are going to step in and keep things going from Corian and Marquise where they left off. We think that, you know, we'll, we'll start off or keep it going just as, just as well as they were. So. Well, that's good. Um, by the way, it's funny. You are very talkative. You've, you've always been a yeah. great interview, <laughs> talkative, outgoing, you you couldn't be more opposite of Jalen. Jalen is like Mister yeah. Quiet, straightforward, <laughs> all business. You guys are exactly. co- pretty pretty polar opposites, though, aren't you? Yeah, yeah that's what's funny about me and Jalen's game is um, you know we're we're actually very opposite. Like you know I'm the talkative one, he's just the quiet one. He's the technician. I'm more of the athletic one. Um, <laughs> like or like I use my athletic ability more. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's just funny, but, you know, at the end of the day, me and Jalen get along very well. Um, he's also one of my really closer friends on the team, which we're all very close, which is nice. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's funny how opposite we are on the field. A couple more minutes here with uh, Julian Blackman. A uh, couple of guys battling for your starting spot at the other corner, Tariq Lewis and Josh Nurse. Josh was a receiver when he came to the program. Now he's a corner, yeah. big, tall, lanky corner. Tariq got to play a little bit there last year. Give me a little scatter report on both those guys. I assume they'll both probably play, but everybody oh, yeah. loves to be the guy out there when the game starts. So kind of give me a little mm-hmm. scatter report on Tariq and Josh and, and where their games are. Honestly, they're both, like like you said, they're both going to play. Uh, they're both ready to play, and we trust them both. Um, so it's going to come down to what the coaches want. But I just know that right now I just love how long Josh Nurse is. Um, and, you know, his passion of the game is just – you know, second to freaking Coach Shaw's passion, and it's it's crazy. Um, but uh, you know, in terms of Tariq, Tariq's a playmaker. Um, you know, he he he's always willing to make plays, and he's tough. And that's that's one thing that I love about Tariq. So it's just kind of like we'll see. Um, you know, when when time comes, maybe maybe it's a matchup thing um, with them. But um, it'll be fun to see them battle out um, in fall camp for sure. What grade would you have been in in 2009, Julian? Fourth grade? Oof. Fifth grade? Shoot, 2009. Yeah, fifth grade. You know what happened in 2009, right? What was that? That was the last time well, BYU beat Utah. <laughs> you don't, oh, you, oh, that's right. There's, that's a comp- right. there's a competition. I mean, nobody wants to be the next team to lose, right? You Is that is that talk among you guys? You don't want to be the – the the class the squad the team that that loses in that game. That's the funny thing is that that's kind of not no that's not the approach that we look at it as you really know, it's not like no it's not we don't want to be the guys that lose it's it's we're about to get them out of the way of what we're like get them out of the way of what we're trying to accomplish um, you know we don't really think about it as that way I guess I guess this the mindset is a little bit different. The mindset is we're going to win that game anyway we've got we've got bigger bigger fish to fry. Uh, I mean, it's we're not going to overlook them because we know they're a good opponent. But you know, like this isn't our Super Bowl; it's theirs. This is this is this is just another game that we need we need to win in order to get what we want accomplished done. So everybody said unfinished business, unfinished business. What what is the unfinished business? To win the Pac-12. That simple, huh? I mean, 
is to win the Pac-12. That's that's the unfinished business. I mean, we yeah, we won the South, and yeah, that that was cool, but that's not enough for us. Um, we want we want to win the whole thing. We want to be the we want to be the class to win the whole thing this year. All right, I'm I'm going to ask you a question. You get to move to offense. Britton Covey gets to move to defense. Oof. Who makes that transition easier? Oof, me. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> so are you playing slot or are you playing outside? Outside receiver for sure. Okay. So you 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 think Britton would have a little more struggle playing safety than you would playing wide receiver? Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I know what he would say. He'd say, nah, Julian would have more struggle at wide receiver. Ah. <laughs> uh, I was a wide receiver all growing up. Yeah, but th- but that's just the competitor you guys both are. You're both going to say those yeah, things, true. right? <laughs> true. Um, basketball wise, who's the best? Who's the best hooper on the Utah ba- on the on the Utah football team? If you were, no, but better yet, no, no, but, but better yet, Julian, no, 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 better yet, put together your five. You're you're putting together a team for the big three downtown, or you're putting together a a, a, a f- starting five for a team. You you guys are going to play. I don't know. You're going to play Larry's team, so you're going to put together five to match up with the running okay. Utes. So give me five. give me, and because I know you're including yourself on this, right? Oh yeah, for sure. There's Definitely. no I have no doubt in my mind you're including yourself. So who are the other four oh, guys yeah. that are joining you? The other four guys would be Jalen Johnson. Okay. Samson Nakua. Okay. And then I would probably have Bradley and I. Is Bradley setting screens? Yes, Brad. That's our big man. That's our big man. So, right so, so you're going kind of small ball then. If Bradley's your big man, he's going to be kind of your your undersized <laughs> five, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're going to be small, but we, we shoot threes. We're going state. All right. Uh, so you, Jalen, and Sampson, Sampson, Bradley, and who's the fifth? Bradley, and then the fifth would probably be Cole fathering him. Really? Yeah. Okay. We're going with Cole. Cole's that's a ball cool. player. Yeah, he put he hoops. He's pretty good. All right, so that that's the five years you're squaring up. I like it. Now, it, can everybody shoot? All of us can shoot. Yeah, you know, all of us are decent except for you know Brad. Brad's <laughs> not really like a three point shooter, but he he makes them sometimes. He got a mid range game, but he's going to set screens, yep. rebound, and bring bring the toughness. Yeah, he's got he's got some post shimmies, and he he got all the accolades inside. So yeah, we we need it. Okay, so, fair enough. Sure. Fair enough. <laughs> Would you be on just about anybody else's team, do you think, if I was asking Cole or somebody else? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, last question for you. There's going to be a lot of hype around this team this year. You guys are going to be picked to win the South. I don't have any doubt about that. A lot of people may pick you to win the league, too. Uh, how do you deal with that? You guys you guys are going to have a lot of guys back that were part of that team a year ago, too. Um, how, how do you deal with the hype around uh, what this season might be for you? Man, that's that's one thing that our coaches, you know, they harp on. Uh, even our weight room coaches, you know, they talk about how everyone has a target on on Utah's back, especially because we won the South last year, and you know, the teams that we beat are gonna are gonna want to beat us this year. Um, but you know, what one thing I do is I just take it one game at a time, just like the coaches have been saying, um, you know, and working hard right now so that you know the end result is um, the way that we want it. Because at the end of the day. Uh, this is this repetition like if you can be consistent right now then you'll be consistent and in, inside of the um during the season so um i just i just think that consistency consistency right now is very important and um just repetition hey enjoy your time you're on the field in three weeks you'll be on the field on the field in 51 days it'll be here soon i appreciate you coming on the show today julian i'll talk to you soon all right, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Talk thank to you. you later. Thank you, Julian. Right. Julian Blackman with us here on the Bill Riley Show today.